<clears throat> the first piece is early on in the book. The book is about appearance and disappearance. And what happens in this book is it's an exploration of, of the possible language for beauty. Because there can be such a language. Because the language for beauty can exist, especially when you're teasing at the very edges of, of sentimentality and then and risking you know, falling into that. And so these are two of the most beautiful people who have ever come into my life. Uh, one is this woman, Mai, and this other woman, uh, Kathy Acker. And I don't know if I can make, make it through a Kathy piece, but I'm going to try. I've never been able to read it. I tried reading a Kathy piece once, and I think I read the words the. <laughs> 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 uh, the other thing I wanted to share is that the first piece I'm reading, which is called A Prayer for One Sentence, is a piece that's going to be published next summer in, uh, by Richard Peabody and Gargoyle Magazine. Um, and it's done. I mean, Peter, you know, Richard got it. You know, he's happy with it, and he, you know, he accepted it, and so on and so forth. And then, then I've been working on it since I got here. So, like, a lot of what you're about to hear is first draft. You know, so bear with the clumsiness of it. Some of it is only, not even quite first draft, it's more like half draft. <laughs> Which is going to require me reading my handwriting. And as many of you have had experience, that will be quite a chore. So, this is called A Prayer for One Sentence. I found these sentences disguised as photographs in an abandoned autobiography, written by an uncertain hand. I followed each sentence into a mirror. These sentences nearly disappeared among other derelict, barely legible sentences written on fallen leaves, on torn pages, on river rocks. Sentence after sentence became less visible and began to fade away again into photographs. My wanted to return. She longed for a home that had somehow escaped her desires. She had been displaced for too long. A photograph can never be a place. A photograph does not arrive. Photographs dissolve the present and flee into history, becoming past before they can reappear in the present. The words that appeared in these sentences as if they were photographs unraveled and sought flight. They carry my and me to the brutal and happy frontier of the unspoken. The other thing that, if you were paying attention earlier, the other thing that you will hear are echoes. You know, so they, there will be echoes that will go back to these images, that the text in here, right? So that, that the book echoes, you know, begins to echo and, and communicate with itself, with, with itself in different time places. So time is different in this book because of my new philosophy of time, which, which I'm, I'm, I'm living. I, I know this is a beach ball. I say this, I say this sentence aloud. This is a, it's a photograph of me as a very young child, totally hot. <laughs> <laughs> and, and this is like before I had read McGreek and before Foucault. Uh, so this is before this is not a pipe. So like I'm way before Foucault. And I was just a little boy, but a totally hot little boy. And I'm standing on the beach, holding a beach ball, pointing it to the beach ball, my finger, saying to my mother, this is the beach ball. <laughs> um, so the image will be in, in the book. It's, I don't. I don't want to. I'm going to project it, but it's, I look so hot. I mean, my knees are like. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is the beach ball. I say the sentence aloud, but my voice trembles slightly. My looks over at me. She too seems to know that this is the beach ball. She is comfortable with my words. She trusts them. Watching her eyes and pointing directly at the beach ball, I begin to repeat myself, but this time, I speak each word more carefully. This time, I am more assured. I know, I say directly to mine, this is a beach ball. A young child tugged at the hem of my skirt, fearful, her eyes staring at me as if I were insane. I say it again, and this time, I touch mine, hold on to her muscled shoulder the way that Benji held on to that spiked fence held on for dear life, afraid he would fly away before his sister came home from school. I know this is a beach ball. It's all right, Mai tells the child. Don't be afraid. He's just doing philosophy. 